It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Rockstar Games has always been at the forefront of controversy. When Grand Theft Auto Street first came out, many Christian conservatives were really concerned about the content and apparently accused the game of causing violence in real life. When Bully came out, many parents again were concerned that the game would also cause bullying in real life. When Red Dead Redemption 2 came out, it caused controversy among the feminists. And so, Rockstar Games for over a decade now has faced nothing but controversy when it comes down to their games. However, it seems as though that like a lot of stuff has been changing at Rockstar Games and for the worse. The first thing I immediately noticed was their seminar back in E Street 2021 where basically they were just talking about diversity and inclusion for their own personal video games. Hello, I'm Alan Lewis, Vice President of Corporate Communications and Public Affairs for Take-Two Interactive. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to Virtual E3 2021. Take-Two, like many organizations, is deeply committed to and actively involved in numerous initiatives to enhance diversity, equity, and inclusion within our society and industry. Affecting meaningful, sustainable change is a continuous process, and there is no one solution that can achieve that goal. We believe that to enact change, especially for those in underserved and underrepresented communities, there needs to be a continuum of activism and engagement with educational programs serving as its core foundation. First of all, I first want to say that I am not against the concept of diversity. However, there are two types of diversities that I have noticed so far. The first type of diversity is authentic diversity. Basically the idea that a character is actually pretty cool, that is actually original, regardless of their race, their gender, and their sexuality. That to me is the selling point of a character because ultimately in the end, when I look at the character, I want to see stuff that actually are relatable to me, no matter their race or gender. Now, forced diversity sometimes just uses the whole entire point that they're a woman, that they're black, and blah, 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 as a selling point. And sometimes they go out their way to replace establishing characters of being, you know, a different way just because, you know, they're different that way. And that to me is like lazy. However, that's not the first thing I noticed for Rockstar Games when it comes out of their own personal changes as of lately. Besides the whole entire diversity seminar that I just mentioned earlier, another thing that I caught my eye when I was, you know, making this whole entire video was the fact that Rockstar Games has been also going after people who are making mods for their Grand Theft Auto ports for the PC. Now, the Grand Theft Auto games on the PC have been there for like a really, really long time. And over the years, there has been many mods for those kind of games. I never heard of a game company that was suing other people for making modifications in the game. One of the things that I like about the PC and gaming in general is the fact that you can actually make the mods for any type of game. So to me, it makes no sort of sense whatsoever to just go after people just for creating mods. Not just that, but also they just removed the entire copies of the original trilogy for PS2 on the various sites that actually had it. Now finally, the main story that I want to cover is the fact that Rockstar Games has recently announced a whole entire collection of Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas for various platforms. When I first heard about that news, I was really excited because hey, Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and San Andreas in one place sounds amazing. That's like a great deal for all we get. But then I noticed like there was some really bad stuff behind the whole entire remake. Now first and foremost is the idea that it requires the internet to play those games according to news outlets. So it actually has like DMA as part of its whole entire system for that remake. Now the PS2, the Xbox, 
and the PC versions did not require any type of internet connection whatsoever. Look guys, I'm actually in favor of remakes of these games or ports of these games on newer consoles. I'm not against the various ideas of that, but what is being said is true, that I'm totally against the idea of staying online just for those sort of single player games. It would make sense to use online for like some sort of online mode, like you know doing some sort of online activities, but these are single player games that we're talking about. So if they're single player games, why does it require online to play these type of games? To me, it just makes no sort of sense whatsoever to just make it online only. Besides the news, the DMA stuff, it's also been reported so far that Rockstar Games may, may actually cut some content from the original games because it's offensive to modern day audiences. This is not the first time I heard news of companies cutting out content because it's not so sensible for the modern day audience. Because they did the exact same sort of thing for that whole entire, you know, port for Final Fantasy. They did the exact same thing also for the VR port for Resident Evil 4. Also saying, well you see, it's too offensive for modern day audiences and blah 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 blah. Now, Grand Theft Auto is rated mature. That means that most people who are playing the games have to be mature to actually play it. And obviously the most appealing aspect of the games is just how blunt and how offensive it is. Like, that's the main reason why so many Christian conservatives in the past were actually, you know, frustrated about Grand Theft Auto because of how offensive it was. And so, it doesn't make any sort of sense to re-release the game and have it be half-assed just for the sake of a modern day audience. It kind of assumes that modern day audiences are not sophisticated to know what is actually, you know, good or bad. It's like, dude, that's the main reason why people wanted to play the games to begin with. Because of the word of mouth, that's why you guys have so much success. So, it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever to just censor those three games just because of reasons. So, we have Rockstar Games also stating, of course, like I said earlier, that they want, you know, diversity in their games because, you know, reasons. They also started to, you know, crack down on the various modders for those, those video games for Grand Theft Auto. They also started to put DMCA for, like, you know, the games that, you know, port order. And they got to also, you know, censor the game. So, slowly but slowly, of course, Rockstar Games is a former shell of itself because it's too offensive for the modern day audience to just handle. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.